Hello, I'm Bob Harris. Welcome to Durman's educational video series. In this video series, we're going to be uh, talking about and ultimately showing you the UberDeck system, which is an exterior concrete resurfacing system. Um, as part of the system, we have Param FP, which is their feather patch. So, for example, if your concrete substrate had some chips, gouges, falls, divots, we would go in and then we would start by fixing all of those depressions with the FP system. Once that dried for three hours or so, depending on the ambient and substrate temperatures, we would come back and we would use the CP1000 system, uh, which is the primer system. Uh, you would prime the surface and typically one to two hours of dry time and then you're ready to go back over the top with the Uber Deck. So in terms of the Uber Deck, if you see here in this bag, it's offered in a white base and a gray base, okay? And why that's important is as part of the system, if you choose to color it, you can color either the white base or the gray base with color fast coloring pigment. And so this is an example. If you see right here, this says color fast and it says gray base. So these are all of the colors that are offered to tint or pigment the Uber deck. And if you turn this color chart over, you can see right here color fast and this is what the colors will look like in a white base. So it gives you a lot of versatility and many different options for coloring. In addition, once you've applied the Uber deck and it's cured for the appropriate amount of time, you have a couple of options for, to uh, further color that system. You can use what's called aqua color, which is a water-based coloring tint, basically. Or you could use uh, a pellucid dye, is uh, solvent-based. Um, and this is what the color chart would look like for the pellucid dye. It just really depends on your uh, dry times. If you're needing a quick turnaround, obviously, you would want to use the solvent-based. If time is not an issue, uh, you have much, much more control uh, or greater flexibility using a water-based system. Um, so that's how the system works. Uh, once all of your coloring is done and you've had sufficient cure time, you're ultimately going to come over it with the um, deck guard right here, which is a methacrylate sealer. It's solvent-based and it has or silane in it too for water repellency. So it's an excellent option, and in this video series, we're going to be showing you some different textures that you can achieve, such as a simple broom finish. Not all the time does it have to be architectural or um, decorative, when in fact you can just give a facelift to the concrete simply by brooming the system. We're also going to show you how to do a traditional spray down over a stencil with a hopper gun, and then we're going to show you some basic techniques for taping out a design and troweling over the tape design. So you'll have some versatility in this video series. Let's show you how it works. As previously discussed, as part of the Uber Deck system, what you need to do is you need to address any spalls and divots, and we'll talk about uh, how to address your contraction joints as well. Now, we've already prepped these patches that you see right here, these two spalls, um, but I see a lot of installers, they don't do the necessary preparatory work uh, for adhesion. And so what I like to do is I like to use what's called a nylox wheel, um, which uh, the name basically says it itself. This is nylon bristles. Don't use a steel. Um, wire brush because that's going to transfer metallic powder and be a bond breaker. So the Nylox wheel is great for completely cleaning that out. And again, we've already cleaned it and vacuumed it, so normally you would vacuum right then. Um, the next thing I like to do is SSD the patch, which stands for saturated surface dry. Just dampen it. Uh, in extreme conditions, say for example, it's uh, very dry, you haven't had any rain for days, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and just take a small little brush and prime it with CP1000. But for today's application, this is perfect, just to SSD the patch. Um, so we're taking our Param FP, which stands for feather patch. Um, on a small application like this, we're just going to hand mix since it's such a small amount. That's about all we need. On a viewer, if you were doing um, you know, multiple patches over a large area, and some installers even will do a whole skim coat with the FP. You know, it's certainly you would want to use a, a, a mixing drill, a uh, power drill to mix. So we're going to go ahead and put us a little water in here. It mixes with water. You're mixing it to a little bit thinner consistency than, say, peanut butter. And 
There we go. So to show you what we're looking like with the consistency, again, just a little bit thinner than peanut butter. Make sure there are no clumps, and then you're ready to go right onto your patch. Now for the smaller little patch here, I'm just going to use the smaller trial here, smaller uh, margin trial. So you always want to pay attention to your substrate prior to putting the Uber deck down. Um, we'll let this dry. And then what we'll do is we'll come back in probably about 45 minutes because we're outside and it's warm and the sun's beating down on this. And we'll take the edge of our trowel and we'll scrape over the top of the patch to make sure it's flush. And then we'll vacuum that residual. And once it's dry, we move on to the next step, which is to put down CP1000 as a bonding primer. To recap where we are on our Uber deck installation, uh, previously what we did is we prepped the surface, cleaned the surface. If you remember, we came over and we repaired these uh, spalls with the uh, FP, which is the feather patch, so they're dry. Uh, Douglas has scraped them flush and we've vacuumed them up. We've also filled the contraction joints right here with the uh, feather patch. And now it's time to move on to applying the CP1000, which is an acrylic bonding agent. So a couple of observations. Um, you know, use a chip brush or a paint brush for the corners. And then here, for the smaller app application, all we're going to do is we're going to dip and roll. You don't want the material puddled, but go ahead and just put a nice uniform layer. The reason for this is it's, it's serving to a couple of functions. Number one, we're trying to seal off the porosity of the concrete. Right now, we're, it's overcast and it's not real, real hot. But if we were to put the Uber deck directly over hot concrete, we would have no working time. So by priming the surface first, in essence, sealing off the capillaries of the concrete, it's enabling us some additional working time, but also for adhesion. So the CP1000 is going to absorb down into the porosity of the concrete, and then once dry, about an hour to two hours, uh, when we put the Uber deck down, that's then going to stick to the prime surface. So it's serving uh, multiple functions. A couple of other observations, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the uh, video, We've had a lot of rain, and so things are not wanting to stick to the damp walls, but you really need to protect your surrounding areas. So in a, uh, in a future video, we're going to be demonstrating textures using the Uber Deck. We'll want to make sure and mask off the building and any of your surrounding areas so it, we don't contaminate it. So we're going to get busy uh, putting down the um, CP1000. I'll start in the corners here. You can go ahead. On a larger job, it's actually OK to put the, uh, put the material in a pump up sprayer and spray it down while one person quickly back rolls. But since we don't have the walls masked or the building masked due to moisture, we're going to go ahead and just take our time and roll on the CP1000. Yeah, exactly. All right, we're getting ready to mix and ultimately uh, install our Uber deck. We're going to start with a gray base, and then we're going to put six to 6.5 quarts of clean water into here. A couple things for mixing. Uh, if you chill your water or cool your water, it's going to extend the working time. So oftentimes what we'll do is we'll use chilled or iced water for the mix. Uh, once we put our six quarts in there, we're going to go ahead and use the Color Fast Color uh, to pigment. And the color that we're using is uh, Mesa Verde Tan. 
you, we're gonna put one cup per bag of 50 pounds of Uber Deck. You can go up to two cups, but really there's no reason to exceed two cups because it's reached its saturation in terms of the pigment load. So Douglas is gonna get started putting his six quarts of water in. Um, anytime you're working with a cement-based product, it is really important to protect yourself with a mask. So while we're mixing, we're going to go ahead and at least uh, put our masks on, and then uh, we'll talk about some installation uh, processes after. One last thing, once we've mixed everything, we like to have what's called an induction period. Generally, we'll let it sit for two minutes after we've mixed, and it allows all of the cement grains and particles to fully saturate and absorb the water. And then if we need to alter the water, we go ahead and mix it one more time, and that extends the working time as well. All right, so we've now mixed the color fast into our six quarts of water, and we're going to start with our 50 pounds of Uber Deck Gray. It is a good idea to have a spatula or a margin trowel to keep the sides clean as you're mixing. You don't want the material to accumulate on the side of the bucket. Because of the heat, we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of our uh, 0.5 water, so let's put another, some water in here. Mm -hmm. Yep. There you go. All right, we're gonna give it a solid three minutes of mixing. Now we're just gonna take a chill pill and let it set for about two minutes to induct. Um, and then we're gonna give it a spin. And at that point, if we need to put a teeny bit of water in there, that's gonna extend the working time. So we'll just let it set for two minutes. All right, we've waited our two minutes now and uh, we've got a good mix. We, uh, Douglas put literally only about three ounces more water in there. And so we've got a good workable mix. So now it's time to go ahead and show you some application techniques. Now, for the purpose of this educational video, we're going to show you a couple ways that uh, installers choose to put it down. We always want to do the edges first and then blend in the field area. And you can do that either by using a hand trowel, a magic trowel, and we're going to show you also, um, for educational purposes, a rubber squeegee. So let's get over here and get going on this. Okay, we just installed roughly a little over 300 square feet of the Uber Deck tinted with the uh, Color Fast uh, coloring pigment. And uh, that's it. Tomorrow we'll let it cure and then uh, cure until tomorrow. We'll just give it a light sanding. We'll vacuum that and then go to the next step. We'll talk about uh, different uh, applications in terms of final texturing with the Uber Deck as well. In a previous video, you saw us install the Uber Deck as a base coat. Now we're back the following day after the installation of the uh, base coat, 
What we did is we took some rubbing stones. If you have any ridges or trial lines, you can use just a rubbing stone. Or if it's a large area, you can use a sanding screen, perhaps a 120 grit sanding screen, and then make sure the dust residual is off. And that's where we're at right now. So what we want to always do is either achieve SSD, which stands for saturated surface dry, which I'm about to show you, or when in doubt, you can put a prime coat uh, of CP1000 down. So the guys have already mixed our next batch of Uberdeck. We've colored it with a, a darker gray color. Um, and what we're going to be demonstrating on this video is a simple broom finish. Now, the broom finish is simple, but you've got to be very strategic if you think about it. This, this is uh, one of the more challenging areas that we're working in right now because we're confined with walls. So if I was to come in and broom from this angle and walk that way, the wall is going to be in my way and I'm not going to be able to get a consistent broom. It's going to want to chatter. So you have to be thinking about strategically how are you going to broom this without having a bunch of start and stop lines when brooming. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to broom from the wall this way uh, because it's easier to do. But at the conclusion of our pour here, we're going to show you literally just by hand if, you, if the client wanted the broom perpendicular to this space. You just have to do it by hand because of the wall and because of the building. Okay, because of this little alcove uh, area, Douglas is going to demonstrate brooming. We can't do it with the handle because the handle would hit the building. So in this case, he's going to come in and just put a broom by hand right here. Nice. So now what we're going to do is he's going to dump uh, an area. So that broom is 24 inches in width. So we're going to conceivably go 26 inch wide paths and he's going to continue to broom. I'm going to continue to trowel. So let's dump some material right here. Yes, sir. Okay, so sometimes it's a good idea to work as a team. If I'm right here, I'm going to put that right there for him. And I'm going to look at it, and that looks really good. Really good. So we're going to continue to work our way right on down, as you see here, in this pattern. That looks excellent. All right, I'll take some more material right here. Okay, that's good. Okay, take some. You can see how we're progressing along right now. It's a beautiful broom. Um, just to recap, we're in these confined areas. Unfortunately, if the client wanted the broom going the opposite direction, if we had the broom on the handle and came this direction, when we got to the wall, the, br the broom would want to chatter. It would want to skip, and you would have kind of a chatter mark. So if the client wants it done this way, um, Douglas is going to show you it's got to be by hand because of the confined area or the confined space. And this is how he would do it right here. There you go. So that's, you, that's the way that you would do it. All right, our broomed Uber deck went down nicely. As you can see, it looks great. It's an excellent alternative to resurfacing your uh, pre-existing concrete. Keep in mind, and I know I've already mentioned it at the beginning of this video, you really need to be strategic in uh, and planning out how you're going to broom 
um, the more times, the, the, the greater distances that you go means the more times you've got to put the broom down. And so every time you put the broom down, you're going to see a discoloration mark. So you have to be very strategic, like we showed you. Uh, with Douglas handing me the broom each time and I would trial out a pass. So just be thinking about your broom pattern and uh, you can successfully um, coat over existing concrete with the Uber Deck system. Aquacolor water-based stain system is an excellent alternative for many different surfaces. It's packaged in eight ounce quantities. Uh, it is UV stable. Refer to the Duraman website for uh, a color chart of the variety of colors that, that you can use. This eight ounce um, container mixes into one to two gallons of water. Um, and sometimes what some installers will do is they'll mix this into a polymer such as CP1000 so it has a binder so it helps hold the material down. Um, we're gonna simply spray it on uh, on a broom surface, but this is great if you um, have existing concrete, you wanna change the color or unify the color, for example, a lot of gray concrete installations have variations, different shades of uh, grays. And if you want to make it all uniform in appearance, that's a great uh, example of where you could use the aqua color. Um, another good example on cementitious materials such as self-leveling overlay cements, oftentimes you have streaks or smoother lines. And if you want to eliminate those unwanted uh, appearances, you could use the aqua color for that. So it's very, very versatile uh, and can be used in a wide variety of applications. We're back on our Uber Deck broom surface, which looks really nice. Uh, we did get a light rain earlier this morning, so unfortunately we're not able to mask all the walls or the building. So a word of caution, make sure you protect that, especially at a client's house. You don't want to spray stain over the top of the uh, surrounding surfaces. So we're getting ready to apply uh, medium gray aqua color, which is the water-based stain system. We're going to spray it down, which is going to unify any variation that you see in color, perhaps from the broom. Um, also, you must seal this after about four to five hours of dry time. You want to let the water flash out of the aqua color, come back and spray apply. Deck guard would be a great candidate for spraying uh, a sealer over the top of this. So you can see Douglas has a shield, so he's going to protect the wall in the building and we're going to spray down aqua color. Let's go this way. You get on my other side. Deck Guard is a solvent-based methamethacrylate concrete sealer. Uh, it, it has siling technology, which is excellent. As a result of that, we tend to get uh, sometimes almost double the life expectancy over a traditional um, solvent-based acrylic. And the reason for that is the siling technology prevents moisture from getting down into the porosity of the concrete. So uh, water tends to deteriorate a lot of the traditional solvent-based acrylic sealers. This product is UV stable. Um, it's excellent for a wide variety of different uh, concrete surfaces, ranging from stamped concrete, polymer modified concrete in this case, um, patios, pool decks. Now, a word of caution if you're going to use this product over um, you know, an area that you're concerned about slip hazards, such as a pool deck, you would want to put a non-skid additive. Uh, generally, we use what's called a resin sand and um, refer to Derman's website for recommended dosage rates, but generally it's somewhere around four to six ounces of resin sand that suspends into the sealer. A word of caution, if you are going to put the non-skid additive in the, uh, in the sealer, one person needs to continually agitate or stir it uh, so you don't get it settling down on the concrete. And the whole goal is to suspend that resin sand in the material. Um, if you do it properly, you should not even be able to visually see the resin sand, but yet it'll feel the equivalent of like a 180 grit or a 200 grit sandpaper and provides a non-skid non uh, slip surface. So it's excellent for exterior. It's UV stable. Some installers do prefer to use it on interior applications. However, a word of caution, it does have solvent in it, so there is an odor. And, you know, you would never want to use this product any around, uh, around any ignition source um, for safety reasons.
we're back on our broomed, uber decked, uh, cementitious topping. Now we're getting ready to seal with deck guard, which is the methyl methacrylate uh, silane sealer. A couple observations, you don't want to seal in the warmest part of the day, you're prone to getting outgassing bubbles. So uh, seal your surfaces in the coolest part of the day or when the temperatures are declining at the very end of the day. So we're gonna spray it on uh, at an approximate ratio of about 300 square feet per coat per gallon. So we're spraying on deck guard on the top of the broomed Uber deck. You can dip and roll as well. This panel was previously stained with uh, aqua color, water-based medium gray.